take Granola. It choked. And also went blah blah blah. I think that, uh, I was gonna call her Lucy, her name is Gracie, like what? Hey guys, it's Jay and I'm here with a book review for you. I'm going to tell you guys a synopsis of the book, then what I thought about the characters, and then what I thought about the book overall. So without further ado, let us get started! So the book I'm going to be reviewing today is Dead to You by Lisa McMahon. I give this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. At the age of 7, Ethan was abducted from his front lawn about 9 years ago. Now at the age of 16, he is finally returning to his family after all this time. Unfortunately, Ethan can't remember a thing from his childhood, only his childhood that he had with his captor named Ellen. Obviously, this is a lot for Ethan and his family to take in. So when his younger brother Blake starts to doubt who he really is, it creates a lot of tension for Ethan and his family. The story follows Ethan and his struggle with his own identity and the reactions of other people around him. And I'm going to stop holding the book now because... Uh, again, I am lazy and don't like holding the book up. So now I'm going to talk about a couple of the characters in the story. So first off is Ethan, the main character. He is so lovable and easy to like, and you immediately sympathize with him about what he's going through. I absolutely loved his character. I think that his emotions were very real and raw, and there was a lot of pressure on him to be what other people expected him to be because they all thought that he should remember his childhood, and it must have been extremely frustrating, so you really, really sympathize with what he's going through. Next up is Ethan's younger brother, Blake. He is 13 years old, and I absolutely despised him. He was such a jerk, and I understand that he would be mad about what happened to his family and everything he had to go through because of what happened, but really man like why you gotta be so mean like this kid is going through so much and i understand that you're going through a lot too but like bruh lighten up go to an anger management class or something like jeez talk to him instead of being a jerk next up is gracie she is ethan and blake's younger sister she is six years old and she is the most adorable thing in the entire world she is so sweet and lovable and caring and the way that she calls Ethan Ethan is like the cutest thing ever. It melts my heart every time. I think that Gracie was the sweet relief to all the drama in the book and it kept the book somewhat light. I think that Gracie's love and trust was perfectly balanced with Blake's anger and mistrust and I think it was perfect the way that it was written. Next up is Cammy, who is the girl next door who Ethan finds himself falling for. I thought she was a really great addition to the story, although I think the insta-love between Ethan and Cammy was a little ridiculous because, I mean, you just got abducted, man, you're finally coming home, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my god, girl, I need her, I love her, oh my god, she's the best thing that ever happened to me, except you can't remember anything else in your life. So it's just like, wh where is this coming from, my friend? Why is this happening? Like, you, you should be focusing on other things right now. That's just my opinion, I guess, but insta-love is not for me, but we all know that already. I really did like Cammy's character. I feel like she was very understanding towards Ethan and really helped him get through what he was going through. And I did find myself rooting for them in the end, and I think that they were very cute together. I just think that they jumped into things a little bit too quickly. But that's just my opinion yet again. And finally, the parents of Ethan, Blake, and Gracie. I think they were so wonderfully written. All of their reactions were so realistic, and I don't think that anything was, like, weird or, like, out of place. And you could really sympathize with what they were going through because it would be such heartbreak to lose your child and then all of a sudden he's back. It would be the most amazing feeling in the world. So you really feel for them throughout the entire story. Alright, so now my overall thoughts on the book. I thought it was so good, obviously, since I gave it 4.5 stars out of 5 stars. Which is very high for me. I usually give 3 stars for everything. So the fact that I'm giving it 4.5 stars is like a huge deal. I think that the plot was so original and the concept of the book was so interesting that it instantly grabbed me right from the very first page. It was so addictive, I could not put the book down. I read it in one sitting, I stayed up till like 3 in the morning reading it, 
because it was just so good. I absolutely loved it. I think the book was perfectly written, it didn't seem forced or anything like that, and I feel like the family members and Ethan reacted exactly how somebody would react in this situation. It was, it just felt really real to me. I love how this book had me on an emotional roller coaster the entire time. I felt so many emotions throughout the entire book. I was happy when the family got reunited, I was sad for Ethan's situation, and extremely angry whenever Blake was anywhere near the story. It was so good. I think the book is really creepy, but it's not too creepy. I mean, it messes with your head psychologically, but it's something that a lot of people could read without being too freaked out, and I know a lot of people can't read some books because they creeps them out too much, but I think this is like the perfect book for people who want to read psychological thriller kind of books, but they're scared of the more intense ones. I think this one is perfect for you. There was a lot of swearing in the book, a lot of f-bombs dropped, but I feel like they weren't just thrown in there for the sake of being thrown in there. They all worked really well where they were put, and I feel like it really enhanced the story, which usually I don't like swearing in books, but I feel like it worked really well with this one. My only huge complaint about the book is that the cover is just so not, like, I just didn't like the cover. It didn't go with the story, I think. This is the cover, again, if you guys are wondering. It's, like, it's a guy, or a guy or a girl, like, with snow on their face. Like, what? Like, I understand that it took place in the winter, but no, I don't like it. I feel like you could do so much more with this cover to make me want to pick it up. The back blurb is really good, that's why I originally picked it up, it sounds so interesting. I need a sequel! Lisa McMahon, I need a sequel! You cannot leave the book like you did, that is the biggest cliffhanger ever, and she's not writing a sequel, and I am not okay with this. This cannot be a standalone book, it just can't. I was literally reading, and I got to the last page, and I'm like flipping, and I'm like, there's no way this is the end, this cannot be the end, like, what, what, like, Literally mind blown. I didn't see it coming at all. A lot of people say that they could see it coming, but like, I had no idea and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. What? What, Lisa McMahon? What? And that is the reason why I'm giving it 4.5 stars out of 5 instead of 5 out of 5 stars because you cannot do this to me, Lisa McMahon. I am bitter and I am angry and I expect a sequel, lady. I expect it. Please. See, I'm being polite now. Please write a sequel, Lisa McMahon, please. Alright guys, so that is all my thoughts on Dead to You by Lisa McMahon. If you've read this book, I would love to know what you thought of it. Leave it down in the comments, all your opinions and whatnot about it. I love the book. I hope you love it too. Please read it. I will see you in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>